Okay, so let's continue with the submit button. We'll scroll down here to submit. And when the submit button is clicked, we have some decisions to make. The first thing is to make sure nothing happens unless a button has been pressed to put an A, B, C, or D into the text box. So let's go ahead and look here at the control. And it says, if then, we're gonna make a decision here. So we wanna make a comparison. We're gonna compare the two things, the global answer against an empty text string. Because if it's not equal to that, then we can continue compare the correct answer to the one that they gave, etc. So the first thing we're going to do is check the variable. And so we just have to go and get it so we can make the comparison. And that variable is going to be the global answer. If you remember up here, uh, we're setting it to empty at first. And so until they use their A, B, C, or D buttons to type something in there, then it's not going to do anything. So we're going to say as long as it's not empty, then we want to do some other things. And then we've got two possibilities. Either the answer is correct or it is not correct. So we need to get another if then else. So we're going to grab another one and actually put it inside there. So if it's not an empty answer, there's actually something there, then we're going to compare it against the correct list. So once again, we're going to go to the logic and do a comparison. And we're going to get that global answer again. So we can copy and paste, just make it easy. And here, what we want to do is we want to go and get the correct one from the list. So we're going to go ahead and select from this list. We're going to select a list item. So we're going to go and get it from the global correct list. Let's get that variable. So the list that's got the correct answers is the correct list, but we also need to know what question we're on. And that is kept track with a variable that is called the index. Let me just go ahead and get the index. Now, at the beginning, that value is 1. Once we go to the next question, it's going to be two and so on. Now, if it is correct, then we have some celebratory stuff to do. We're going to do something like set the background color of the answer text box. So let's go ahead and set the answer text background color to, and then we'll pick a color, let's say green, okay? Green, go, good. Next, we're going to set the actual text that's inside there from the A, B, C, or D that the button made it into how many points did they get for that. So let's do that again. So we're going to set the answer text button. But we're going to set the text itself. So set the answer text text. And what we want to do is tell them how many points they got. So we're going to do something special here where we're going to join two things together. Because if you want some text and some numbers to be showing up together, you have to do this join. So let's look at this text uh, component here and look for the join. Here it is. So we want to join two things. First of all, let's grab some text. And I like to use the plus sign to show that they got points added on. And then we need to get the actual number of points that they got. And remember, if they press the hint button, it'll be one. Otherwise, it's still set at two. So we just need this variable points to go in there. So we're going to get the number of points that are being added. Now, of course, we're saying they're being added, so we also need to add them in. So we're going to go ahead and get this set, our global score, okay, and we're going to add whatever points they had onto it. So here we have to go to our math, and we're going to do an addition. And what's going to go in here is, well, the score again. So I'm going to go ahead and get the variable, and we're going to get the current score. 
and we're going to add the current number of points, whether 2 or 1. So these are all the things we're going to do if the answer is what it's supposed to be. Change the color of the background of the answer text. Change the text that's inside it from A, B, C, or D to plus and then the number of points. And then we're going to take their score, which starts at 0, and take that score and add the number of points to it. So it'll just keep adding on either 1 or 2 points every time they get a correct answer. So now, if they have gotten it right, they get this. But if they get it wrong, then we want to do something to indicate that. And so we need something in here that's going to be like, otherwise, show that it's red. So we actually need to go and add an else in here, otherwise. So we put the else inside of this. And then we've got what to do if this is not true. So let's go ahead and we can just take this answer text background color and control C, control V and change it to red. That's really all that's needed. We don't need to subtract points. We don't need to do anything with the score. It's just going to stay the same. They didn't get any points and we can add in other fancy things later on. But basically this is the feedback that tells them that it's not going to give them any points, but they got it wrong. Now there's several things that we want to happen after that, no matter if they got it right or wrong. And some of them are to reset some things, and some of them are to uh, give us the hint anyway. Even though we didn't ask for it, after you get the points or no points, then we're going to let you see that article. So I can go ahead and get this from here, uh, set the web viewer visible to true. And it's going to go underneath. So after the decision's been made, it's just going to drop down and it will do this. As long as it wasn't a, a blank answer, everything inside here will be done. Um, next, we're going to set the submit button to invisible. We don't want it there anymore. Now we want a next button. So let's do that. Let's set the submit button visible to false. So let's find it. Here it is. And then this is an easy way. I'm going to put it in there and false. And then we've got another one. We're going to change the next button so that it becomes visible. It's been invisible all this time until they finally put in an answer, find out if it's right or wrong. And then the hint shows up, the submit button disappears and the next button appears. We also need to do some resetting here. So the global answer, now that we've checked it, needs to go back to the blank. So we're going to set the global answer to blank. And in fact, we can we did some of that up here, um, except these are initialization. So we're going to basically redo these three right here, but by setting them. So let's say set the global answer to a blank again. We're going to set the global hint is now false again. Let me just grab a false off of there. And the number of points goes back to two. They, they have a chance at a two pointer again. So let's go ahead and set the number of points to a value of two. And we're starting fresh with the next question once they click on that next button. And that's the submit button. This is kind of the basic version and we'll talk about enhancing and doing some more stuff with it later.